Welcome to video number two for today, all about the Skechers Razor 3. And if you missed this morning's vlog, we talked all about fear. Fear is runners, a topic that you probably like, you know, wouldn't expect maybe on this channel, but I think it's really important to dig into as athletes. And so go check it out, upper right hand corner. Okay, this is not my full review of the Skechers Razor 3 in this video because guess what? I don't, you know, how I like to do at least 50 miles in a shoe before I give a full review. I'm maybe halfway there. So we're not quite there yet. However, you're in luck. Shout out, shout out to Ian from Portland. Ian is a a runner in Portland he's a youtuber and guess what he heeded the call remember last week I asked all of you to send me your videos well he took the time to film a short one minute clip all about the Skechers Razor 3 and yes his channel is down below in the description go check it out and Ian thank you for taking the time you nailed it I'm excited for you all to watch this clip in about I don't know five minutes from now because he has put basically 100 miles in the Skechers Razor 3, which is invaluable information for us as consumers as we start to look at durability because frankly, I don't know when I'll get 100 miles into this shoe. Hopefully in the next month, but we'll see. Like there's a lot of shoes to be working with and I can only run so much. So thank you, Ian, again, for giving me uh, that, that video clip. Okay, this guy is a four millimeter drop. You got 24 millimeter stack height in the heel. 20 millimeter in the in the forefoot and why and so again this is not my full review but i want to talk about why when will i use the sketchers razor 3 in 2019 for my training well believe it or not i actually found a review on the sketchers website that i think summarizes what i'm trying to say really really well listen to this i got this shoe with the intention of using it for racing but have found it to be a great choice for much of my daily training as well. These are incredibly light, but with plenty of responsive cushioning. They keep me moving with quick foot turnover. Boom. Chris, thank you for that from the Skechers website. And base, I just borrowed it. Thank you, Chris. Basically, I couldn't agree more. I don't think... This is going to be, remember we talked about marathon racing shoes in that vlog, upper right hand corner. Uh, I don't think this is going to be a marathon racing shoe. Unlike Chris though, he did say responsiveness. It's pretty responsive, but not at the top of the class, okay? In my humble opinion, I, I feel cushioned. I don't feel responsive. I think there's a difference there uh, through this midsole. And oh my goodness, what else do I want to share? Okay. With the upper, I do remember from the first impression video that I made that the upper was a pretty big concern of mine, maybe the biggest, and it is still like crumbling in on itself through the forefoot, through this upper. Today, I went 10 miles at 620 per mile pace. So it's 16 kilometers, 355 per kilometer. And believe it or not, after one mile, I totally forgot about the upper falling in on it or, you know, crumbling in on itself. And that's good. Like, I think it's a simple fix, Skechers. I think all you need to do is reduce the amount of material through the upper. So keep that in mind. Like the first maybe three quarters of a mile to a mile, I could feel it a little bit. But then as I started going a little faster and a little faster, sure enough, I did forget about that upper situation. And now to the important stuff. How will I use the Skechers Razor 3 in 2019? I will use this shoe, like today, for 10 to 15 mile urban runs, meaning on concrete and pavement. Could I take it to 20? Absolutely. Are there better options? I would say so. Would I take this on dirt? Probably not. I live in Denver. 30 minutes north of Denver is Boulder, Colorado, the epicenter of long distance running and training for many, many Olympians and ultra runners. And it's just like this spot and hub up there in Boulder. Why? You might think it's because of the dirt roads that you've seen me run on up there that are at 8,000 feet. Believe it or not, I think the big reason a lot of Olympians live in Boulder and train there are for these, there's these farming roads that are about 10 to 20 minutes north of Boulder. It's farming roads, they're kind of rolly, a little rolly, not completely flat by any means, and it's at basically 5,800 feet above sea level, these roads. 
and frankly, like these are perfect training roads. Uh, good packed down dirt, but not too packed, not washboard, not packed down like you know how you get on some dirt and it just feels like pavement. Uh, this is nice, good, solid farm road dirt, if you know what I mean. But I don't think I would take the Skechers Razor 3 up to Boulder to train on those dirt roads. Again, I think there's better options. For example, I would, for me, for the 15 to 20 mile distance for the long runs, getting ready for the marathon, I'm gonna lean toward, yes, the Nike Pegasus 35 Turbo. Unless I can find a better option for training, um, like the Zoom Fly, I'm open to the Zoom Fly, but the Nike Pegasus 35 Turbo is just my money shot right now for that longer stuff at a faster clip. I'm talking like, you know, 6.30 to 7 minute pace, holding that for 20 miles or so. And so that's how I'm going to use the Skechers Razor 3 in 2019 for my training. Let's hear a few quick thoughts from Ian in Portland. Hello everyone and welcome from Portland. My name is Ian, also known as the Running Otaku, and today I'm going to talk about this guy. This is a Skechers Razor 3, and recently there's been a lot of chatter on the internet how it could be the Nike Vaporfly 4% killer. And I'm here to say that while it's a great shoe, it does not kill the 4%. You see, the Nike shoe is really, really good for racing half and full marathons, and where this shoe excels is shorter distances, 5K, 10K, half marathon, 15K, and tempo and track workouts. If you're doing something speedy, less than an hour, I'd say give this shoe a strong consideration. Now, I know Seth was initially concerned about the build quality of the shoe with some glue coming out of the side here uh, and a crease where the big toe is. Now, my shoe has those same two faults, but I can tell you after 98 miles of running, which is that many kilometers, it's held up extremely well without any hot spots and even the outsole looks like it's hardly been worn. So there you have it, the Razor 3 in less than a minute. And remember, seek beauty, work hard, and love one another. Bye-bye. Ian, I love it, I love it. Oh man, it's just so cool to just see the collaboration amongst the global running community and shout, Ian and I have never met, just so everybody knows. Like, we're just working here and, and riffing off each other here on YouTube about running shoes and it's amazing. So, Ian, I couldn't agree more about the outsole and yeah, no wear and tear on the outsole. I had a little concern about that, but and again, I only have about 25 miles in this guy. Uh, so Ian has 100, and so his is looking good still. So that's good news. And that is it for today, folks. Keyword for this video is Razor down in the comments. And I actually don't have a question of the day for you, but rather, what questions do you all have for me specifically about the Skechers Razor 3, okay? Ask him up down below, and maybe Ian can help as well with answering some of these questions. You're the best. You rock. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And again, it's an urban shoe, 10 to 15 miles. I don't think I'll take it above 15 miles, but we'll see. Very well cushioned, absorbing a lot of that pounding that you receive on the pavement and on the concrete like you saw today. It just felt like my legs don't feel shot today after wearing this shoe for a pretty good solid clip for 10 miles, if you know what I mean. Oh, see beauty, work hard and love each other. See you tomorrow.